Alright guys, the next tooth we're gonna do is number 22. Lower left canine or the mandibular left canine. Tooth number 22. Make sure our margins go all the way down. Both lingual and labial. Put it on a little bit of lube. Make sure it's not the hardener, it's the lube. Just a little bit. We always start with a get wax coping. Okay, push it down by grabbing the facial and the lingual. Never like this, because you're gonna snap the wax coping right off and you're gonna have to redo it. So, if we take a look at this tooth, we have The crown of the tooth itself is wider, mesiodistally, right? You look at it from the front, from the side. This is the uh, distal view. I don't know if you can see it from all this light. Let's create some. Uh, go a little closer you see you see the curvature here this is very important so when you're waxing it up just take this tooth out and take a look at the curvature okay so you have the distal is rounder the mesial is less round and then you have the distal and the mesial developmental depressions. Okay. And then, what are these lines called? You guys remember? They're called the imbrication lines. They're just basically, as the tooth grows and like little rings form on it and it creates little lines horizontally. If you look at the lingual, it's not quite as detailed as the maxillary canine. So this has more or less of a little bit of a concavity and it doesn't have that large ridge that runs around on the uh, maxillary canine. Okay, so with that, we'll start waxing. <coughs> and it's basically the same startup. 
except here we have the point angles kind of matching up with the laterals so we're gonna try to match those up Remember your uh, razor blade, so you may have to slice through there. And we do the distal point angle. Also, if we take a look at this tooth, You see on the mesial part, it's a lot shorter than the distal part. So the mesial cusp bridge here, right there, is shorter than the distal cusp bridge there. So that's what we're aiming for on the tooth here. So we're going to put the cusp tip a little bit to the mesial and we're gonna try to l line it up with the mandibular first premolar so these are not gonna be too much longer these should be about the same length as the first premolar and kinda line up maybe a little bit higher than the um, incisors. So we have this cusp bridge here that we're going to build is going to be shorter than the distal cusp bridge here. Also, you must remember that this is a canine so it's, it's not going to be very flat it's going to have a central lobe that's more prominent So we have the mesial cusp bridge and the distal cusp bridge. So the next thing we do is what? The mesial and the distal lobes or the mesial and distal line angles. Don't forget the almighty line angle. helps us mark the position of the teeth, the shape of the teeth, and the boundaries of the teeth. Next one is going to be the gingival area, which is what? What is contained in the gingival area? The gingival area contains the height of contour. And the height of contour protects the gingiva from food 
and overstimulation and also understimulation Puddle it in a little bit and that's our shape right there it's almost very close so now we're gonna do the lingual distal lingual marginal ridge which is also the distal lingual line angle remember when you're waxing the teeth think what you're waxing this way the anatomy of the tooth structure will become internalized so you'll be able to remember them if you're just waxing without thinking you're gonna end up not remembering the parts number one and number two most likely you're going to overbuild everything and then you're gonna have to start hacking it away hacking away at the wax and most likely what's gonna happen you're going to break the wax and then you're going to have to re-wax and then re-wax and nobody wants that right? can take a little bit of a little saw and we're going to saw the interproximal so that we can remove the canine just like that I'm gonna pop that sucker out and now guess what Fix the margins. You must fix the margins before you continue. A very easy tooth to wax. Not very big. And it's not very detailed so just pay attention to the shape the shape is important So, mesial cusp bridge, distal cusp bridge. Mesial shorter, the distal's longer. Let's <coughs> smooth it out as much as we can. Then we're going to take the instrument.
Now we gotta be gentle with it, right? So the closer you are with the waxing, the less wax you gotta take off and the less chance you're gonna have to break the margin. Okay, margin nice and neat, that's what I'm looking for right there. So now you have to make sure that we match up with the tooth, with the original tooth right here. See how over there I'm a little bit too fat, so we're going to have to take that back a little bit. So we'll take a little bit off the what? The height of contour. So just use your nails. If you can feel the line then it's not right. So then you gotta add a little more and then take it back very slowly until you run your finger along the margin and you don't feel the transition of the wax and the dye. This, the distal portion here, uh, I feel it's a little bit too straight, so we're going to make more of an S-curve on there. So we're going to thin out the cervical area a little bit. Just don't take the wax off the margin, please. And if you don't feel it's round enough, then we can take a little bit of wax and use the inherent quality of the wax that it wants to be round. And we will create a distal lobe that way. it in a little bit more. Remember it only has to be a little depression. You don't want it to be a groove. Even though some people call it a developmental groove, it is a depression. So there we go. The lower left canine. Tooth number 22. Don't lose the teeth. Five bucks a pop. See once you take the uh, you put the right
height of contouring it shouldn't be popping out the tooth now here I have a gap so we're gonna need this to be contacting so we're gonna pop it back out because if that doesn't contact points off so we'll add a little bit more which actually will help us because it will make this tooth a little more round on the distal let's see if we added enough yeah just enough there's a little bit of a extra wax there so we'll take it out and there you go now we look at it from the top and I do notice that it is a little bit far out on the distal here you see right there just a tiny bit so we're gonna round in this embrasure a little bit So that should do it. Remember the uh, distals on the canines should be tucked in. So now you see the S curve right here. That's what it should be like. Trend, there should be a little bit of a transition between this cusp and the lateral incisor see how it's just a tiny bit taller than the laterals and I kind of like it this way anyway to have the point angle slightly lower than the distal point angle on the lateral so there we go you see it's a nice match And that's number 22.